Hey guys, today we're going to install our own Star Wars Galaxies emulator server. This was a request from somebody from Reddit, and it took me way longer than I wanted to to get to it. I had intended to do this on my own hardware on my ESX server, but uh, it's in pieces and uh, the parts that I needed did not come in. So we're going to do it on Vulture, so that should be fine. This just illustrates my point that you can do this on any machine that you can get Ubuntu 16.04 64-bit running. So we are remoted into my Ubuntu 16.04 virtual machine through Vulture. And uh, I did this earlier today, and I tried to use a smaller budget machine that I had, and it did not work because it did not have sufficient system resources. Uh, one of the things that I had to do is I actually had to bump it up to one of the machines that was uh, the $20 plus a month versions. I think that was the baseline was $20 a month for the resources that it could run. And even then it still needed to have a swap drive installed. Not going to cover in the video how to make a swap drive, but I will put the down, down below in the description. The steps is optional in case you want to set up your own version and your, dis your installation does not build a swap file for you and you start having problems with memory and swap file space when you uh, do the make at the end. If you start, if you see issues with that while you're running it, then check down below, make sure you got a swap file, add the swap file, it should take off. Uh, on Vulture, anything below 20, the $20 a month version is going to uh, not have enough disk space to be able to build the swap drive on. So you're going to limit yourself too much and it's not going to work for you. $20 is like the minimum that you can run this on. Uh, and I wouldn't even recommend that for a production one for more than a couple people. But you could try it out and hey, you can always upgrade it to a more powerful machine at any time. If uh, you're just beta testing and setting it up and then push it forward to move it out, that's always an option. I did not stress test this on Vulture, but... The reason I'm making this video is because there's a lot of people out there who have come out with a lot of ways to set up development environments and whatnot, and it's very confusing and it seems like the hardest hurdle for a lot of people to get into helping out with this is getting the thing installed and running. Uh, the, the development environment virtual machine they push out is in some cases just a virtual disk image that someone's put together for you. Uh, that puts them in responsibility for maintaining it. And then when they update it, if they update it, how do you know if you're keeping what you have on your machine already? Do you have to do special things to back up your database? There's a whole line of, uh, of things you got to do with that that make it a pain. Plus the fact that setting it up any other way is just horrible. But if you install VMware Player on your computer even and then just install Ubuntu 16.04 64-bit. You could follow these steps. You don't need to do anything else. I am remoted in through SSH through to my server. As long as you can get there, you can you can do this. It, it doesn't make any difference. You can do this. You don't need any of the special tools. You don't need anything like that. Everything is contained within the installation of Ubuntu that you need, except for some things that as long as it's got access to the internet, you'll be okay. So we'll get you through this, and you won't have to worry about having all those extra tools and making all those extra accounts on Gitler and all those other things is just silly. So this also puts you in a situation where you're working off of the, uh, the core three actual uh, source code. So you'll be more in touch with what's going on and you can actually do uh, latest and pull from Git the latest developments, changes of what you've done, what's been done. Doesn't update very often, but when it does, you'll be able to pull those down and take care of it yourself on your schedule, not someone else's schedule. So there's a number of dependencies that need to be installed on the server. And like I said, I'm gonna do these step-by-step -step down below, watch the video, and then you can follow along, just op open up the description and you should be able to get right along with me. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna copy this line because it's kinda of long, is we're gonna do uh, an apt install to do uh, the essentials and the libsql and all the other stuff that we need, the Lua and everything that we need to install to get it to build the server. So we're going to do those and I already have those installed because I've done this a couple of times trying to get this video to come out. But 
There are about 26 things that it needs to download. It takes about five minutes. Not a terrible amount of time. It just takes a couple minutes to download. Uh, I've already done an app get up to update and install so that I'm current. And since this is a Vulture VM, it downloads the latest 16.04 ISO, so there are no updates. All right, so the next thing we need to do, so I'm in the wrong directory. All right, and I probably could have backed out to there. So we're gonna make a directory called get. I'm gonna type the command in, but I've already done it. So we're gonna do make dir p get. All right, so that makes the directory get where we are. We're gonna change directory into that. So we're make sure we're in the right concurrent directory and we're right where we need to be. And then we're gonna clone this directory. And this directory is the core three source code revisions, everything that comes down from the main team comes through here. And Git is gonna go out and get those for us and bring them down to the machine. It's gonna clone that directory to ours. It already exists. We're already good to go. Yours is gonna take a few minutes, depending on your internet speed, could take anywhere from two to five minutes to download all the files in this directory. There are a bunch of them. Oops. As you can see, this particular one makes a folder called MMO Core ORB. That's the directory we need to work in. So we're going to go MMO Core ORB. And this is what it downloaded from Core 3. This is the basic source code and all the files that you need to worry about that it needs to build. Here's where I had problems using the base machine because I did not have a swap drive. Like I said, down below, I'll put the optional on how to make a swap drive sufficient size for you to do what you need to do. I did not get it to compile. I got memory errors while I was compiling without it. The reason being is because we're gonna do a make with a J8 and that runs eight threads at the same time. You can run less, but doing eight gets it done and gets it done when you want it to. Because honestly, this next step, Everything should be green or maybe a yellow here or there to tell you that there's a something updated or out of date or whatnot or something needs to be optimized. Those are things you don't need to worry about. The yellows are cautionary and man, maybe you want to look at them later. Everything should be pretty much green. If you see any red in these next in this next step, you're going to need to address it. If you follow my steps, you should see no red anywhere. You should be able to get to this point, hit this command, and get to the next screen where it's done. Once I hit make dash J8, I will let you know it took about an hour and 15 minutes to build the server. Now I've already built the server and I'm not going to build it again because there's no point in me sitting here for another hour and a half building a server just so you can see that it built. So when I hit this, it's going to tell me everything is already done. It would go through these steps the same, except it would build every single one of these as it went. And it would get to this point and say 100% built, done. All of these would be green if it was actively building. Now I'm going to stop here because this is the first stopping point for this particular thing where you would have a critical point to, to failure. I'm going to leave that open for questions. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Uh, I can tell you if you have 16.04 installed, you can get to the internet, you can get everything updated. You follow my steps below, I'll get you to this point. If you deviate from anything that I've got in here, I cannot promise you it's going to work because your dependencies may be different. Your dependencies may not install. There may be other things you need to adapt, and I'm not going to cover th deviating from this in this particular series. Maybe we can do that later, but at this point, you've got VMware, you've got uh, Ubuntu 16.04 installed, either remotely, locally, in a VM. You can get to the internet. You got get to do th what it's needed to do. You got the dependencies to do what it needed to do. You built a swap file if you had to, and you ran make dash J8 and it got to this point with all green. Look for the next video on how to configure the server for yourself. 
to take it away from the generic install for Basilisk and whatnot, but I will go through and tag all the files you need to change to make this your own server. Now this is going to be taking the server and getting it running. This is not going to be things you need to modify. We can cover that later. This is just going to be getting you running. There's a SQL database we need to import. We need to make some changes to the SQL database. I'm going to cover that in the next video. But this will get your server installed. If you are clear to 100% to here, stop and just wait for the next video. It should be a couple of days and we'll get that done. I just need to do that. What I do now on my machine and what I recommend you did on yours is I would make a backup of this directory so that you don't have to download it again. This is your built server. It's 100%. If you have any problems, you can wipe out the other copy of it put this on top of it and you're back to this point so you're functional at 100 percent i'm also downloading a copy of this to my desktop on the workstation that i use at home so that i can edit these files and then upload the changes to the server later so we're going to cover that in the next video what you need to change what you need to look at and how what decisions you need to make at this point but like i said make a backup here spend your time doing that and then copy them to your workstation if you're working remotely like I am through Vulture so that you've got a copy on your workstation that you can edit and then push them out to the server later. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video, but I need a bigger screen width to show you these things. The other thing we need to do is we need to copy the tray files up to the server. So we're going to do that, but I need to show you where that setting is so you know where they go. So that'll be in the next video. That's it for this one. Stay tuned. I hope this makes sense. But like I said, if you want to set up a server, even just for testing or help or development or whatever you want to do, or you're just curious to see how it works, this will get you to the point where you're ready to set the next steps to customize it to be your server and get it running. Thanks for watching.